Hello everybody and welcome back to Python for Aerospace. In today's lesson, we are going to learn how to compare the aerodynamic coefficients calculated in the previous lesson to experimental data, which is contained into this uh, uh, technical report uh, uh, created by NASA, which is available in the Jupyter Notebook uh, that I linked in GitHub. The experimental data is uh, contained uh, into a PDF, like this one. Uh, and as you can see, it's not in machine readable format. So what we're gonna do is to sample with uh, Python all the points that form and all these curves. Then we're gonna set the correct uh, uh, range for each um, axis. And then uh, we're going to plot uh, the, the captured values with the ones calculated in the previous lesson. So I hope you guys are ready and let's get started. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So the first thing we need to do is to find, uh, after downloading the PDF, is to find the, the correct uh, uh, data that we want to sample. In our case, we uh, want to find uh, the NACA airflow 4418, which is the one that we have calculated the aerodynamics coefficients with um, Maxwell. And let's look for it. And as you can see, we are here in the, on this page, 143, and we found uh, the following curves. Now. Uh, as you can uh, imagine, there, are, there is not just one curve for each aerodynamic coefficient, but they also depend on the Reynolds number. As a matter of fact, uh, we, if we check here at the bottom, we can see that uh, different uh, uh, type of points have been used uh, to represent each different uh, configuration at a different Reynolds number. So we can see that squares represent the six. 100,000 Reynolds number, which is the one that we are interested in. Therefore, if we want to sample the values for the um, uh, lift coefficient, which is this curve here, we want to capture the point, the, the square, uh, yeah, the square symbols of the curve. Oops, yeah. Yeah, so this one, this one, this one, this one, and so on. Good, so how do we do that? The first thing we need to do is to uh, get a snapshot of, uh, the, of the graph. We can do this by using, for example, a snipping tool that you have installed in Windows. If you are in Windows machine, if you are in Ubuntu, then I believe you have to use some other uh, tool to do that, but anyways, and here we got to be very, very precise, okay, like so. We start at the corner and we end up at the very bottom right corner. That's it. So let's save uh, the image. Hmm? And uh, we can save it uh, somewhere in our computer. In my case, I have already saved it, so I don't have to do that, okay? Good. So once you save it, you will probably have something like this. Okay. That's your image. So let's start by importing this image into Python. So in order to do that, we need first to import a file, the following library. So uh, import cd2. Good. Once we have CV2, we can uh, we can read the image, right? So let's do that. Actually, yeah, let's do here. Mm, read image, and here we're gonna have image equals to CV2 dot I am read, and here we're gonna have the path uh, to uh, the image. So in this case, I like to use OS library in order to join the path with the file name. So how is it? 
uh, it's os.path.join and inside we're going to have the relative path to the folder where the images are stored in my project and uh, the file name is going to be this one for me okay so let's launch the cell and it looks like there are no mistakes let's print the content of image yes and we can see it's like uh, an array of arrays or no it's a list of lists to be correct um, where we have the, the pixel values uh, of the of the image we we captured before good let's try to plot the image and see what it looks like so plot the image with cv2 and to do that it's easy we can call cv2 and the method him show and inside we can give a name to this uh, plot uh, image and uh, we're going to call the object image or uh, yeah which contains the the pixel values and we can see we have a mistake here because there is it's actually cv2 mm -hmm. let's do it correct good and we can see that python has opened something and uh, it returns uh, error as we can see the image is like all grayed out so it doesn't really make sense so how do we solve this problem well it's pretty easy well if you close it actually it will it will make the kernel fail so we have to restart it unfortunately so let's do that So after we have restarted the kernel, uh, what we need to do is just to add the following line of code, which is called cv2 wait key zero. Okay, uh, this um, method will allow us to keep the image open, okay, and uh, visible without any crash. So let's do that. Oops, here again it's cv2. And uh, we have the image finally as we want. And we can close it and no problem. And to close it, we can actually add another line here. And it's going to be CV2 uh, destroy window. Destroy window. And uh, we pass the image name. So that's the proper way to close the image. So we can add uh, some comment. For example, close image. Perfect. So the next step now is to have a function, okay, that uh, will allow us to capture all the the pixel coordinates hmm, every time we click it with the mouse on the curve. Okay. So let's do that. And uh, oops, oh, here we need to fix again this error. CV2. So let's define the function, and we're going to call it uh, def, and we call it mouse points. Hmm? This function will capture the coordinates uh, of the point that we click on the image. So here we need to have an event, and we need uh, x, y coordinates. Then we can have flag and parameters. Param. Okay. Now, not all of the inputs are necessary, but this is how it usually works. So let's uh, write if event okay is equal to cv2 dot event, and here we have left l capital L button mm -hmm, down. So every time we click with the left button of the mouse, hmm, what happens? Uh, we need to capture the coordinates, right? And we're going to store it into a, a, a list. So we're going to have something like this. X coordinate dot append X. So every time we click, uh, we append the value to this list, which we need to define. 
like this. And uh, analogously, we need to do the same for the Y coordinate. Hmm? Like that. Oops. Yes, square brackets. So Y chord dot append. And here we have Y. Now we could actually print the values. And to do that, it's very easy. We can do print and then a string, right? Where we have the x, y coordinates. And I think this is helpful to understand how the pixels are ordered in the image. So let's have format and then x, oops, x and y, okay? So let's launch the code. Yes, no mistakes so far, good. Now what we need to do is to call this function, right? We need to call it so that we will be able to capture the values. So let's do that. So after where we have opened image, we can have write um, get mouse coordinates from, oops, from image. And here we're going to have uh, cd2 dot set capital M mouse capital C callback and then we have image oops the image name that we defined previously and then we're gonna call the method oops, uh, mouse points good let's launch the code and we can see that the image is open correctly and uh, let's check if we click uh, the coordinates, the XY coordinates. And yes, you can see at the bottom of the cell, coordinates are open. Now, this is an uh, important step because we need to see how these coordinates um, are, are referenced. So usually, coordinate zero, zero for us would be at the bottom left corner, right? But if we click here, let's see what happens. No, we don't get zero, zero. We get two, okay, which is almost zero. But then we get the 692. So it looks like the X coordinate is making sense according to uh, the logic. So we have zero here and it's incrementing going towards the right, but the Y coordinate is not. So let's see, if I click here, the Y coordinate starts to become zero, basically. You see, here it's one. And if we go down, it increments. But we, we would like to have the opposite, right? We would like to have that the Y be, is about zero here, is actually zero here and increments going up. So how do we do that? This is simple. Or not so simple, actually. <laughs> uh, it took me a while to figure out, even though uh, afterwards it makes sense. So every time we capture the Y coordinate, hmm, we need first to like make it negative. Hmm? So, and then we have to translate it, okay, by the amount of pixels mm -hmm, in the. Uh, in the y uh, direction. And how is that possible? Well, we're going to use parameter here. Hmm? Pass a parameter that flips basically the, the y coordinates. And uh, this is can be done here, defining the variable parameters, which is equals to the image shape, basically. Hmm? And uh, as a matter of fact, if we do print image shape, yeah, we see these three numbers, and this is the uh, y coordinate basically. And um, we need to add it to the negative y variables. Mm -hmm. So parameter will be passed as an input of the method, mm -hmm. like so. And here we're going to have the parameter zero, we access the first item. 
So let's do the same for the print here. So copy and paste here. And now let's test it and see if it actually works correctly. So control shift and then let's try to click, uh, for example, down here. Yeah, now we can see that uh, the X and Y coordinates at the bottom left corner are basically well, zero. So it means that we have uh, implemented the correct algorithm. Very good. So the last thing we need to do is uh, to store the capture data into a file that then we can use uh, to um, manipulate and to transform the X, Y coordinates uh, from pixels to actual units that can be compared to the uh, calculated data from XFOIL. So let's save the data in the following way. Save data, we're gonna open a file, open file. We're gonna use the OS library again to join the relative path data to the file which in this case I'm going to call CL44181600000. And this file is going to be open in the uh, written write mode. And we're going to have a for loop to loop through all the captured uh, X and Ys. So um, we can do that uh, defining X and Y and uh, we're going to iterate in a list, which is given by putting side by side the X and the Y coordinate. So we need to use a zip, which put X coordinate and Y coordinate side by side. So then we're going to write uh, the pair X and Y into the same row. So we need to use F, write what? Uh, we need the string here where we have the X and Y's in the same row and for each iteration we go to a new row. Hmm? So then we have format and here are the X and the Y. Good. Finally, we can close the file like this. Let's launch it and test it. So. Again, let's capture all the points of the of the curve. We need to be quite uh, precise. I'm not uh, I'm going to be too fast, but it doesn't matter for this demonstration. So we capture the points and let's check uh, if uh, the file has been saved correctly. So we can see that uh, the file is right here. If we open it, we can see also all the points. Uh, as expected. Very good. So what we can do now is to convert the data from pixels to the units uh, that we need to compare um, the captured data with the one calculated from XFOIL. So let's do that. Convert data to correct units. Okay. In order to do that, uh, we need to know the range of the X and Y coordinates, and we can find out that in our PDF. For example, the X coordinate goes from minus 32 to plus 32 degrees. On the other hand, the Y coordinate, which is the lift coefficient, goes from uh, minus 2.0 to 3.6, okay? So we're going to use this to create a linear interpolation, which allows us to convert pixels to the degrees and a dimensional lift coefficient. So we can define, for example, the X range, which is equal to, oh, it's a list and has two values, minus 32 plus 32 and the Y range is um, again a list that goes from minus 2 to plus 3.6 as we just saw. Okay, so um, 
we can have uh, the equation of the of the line. We can use the equation of a line in order to uh, transform the pixels into the the the, exp the same range as the experimental data. So we can do the x of the experimental data is going to be to the x range, and we're going to have the first item minus 32 plus what? And we're going to have uh, the following. Um, In the following ratio, x minus range, oh, x range, sorry, and we're going to have the first item minus the x range, uh, and the first item, so basically a 32 minus, minus 32, so 64, and we're going to divide this by the a number of pixels uh, along the x-axis. So image shape, oops, shape one, not zero, it's one. Okay, and then we're gonna multiply this by what? By the x-coordinate, right? And we need to convert them into an array. Let me check my notes, but it should be here. An array, array. And here we have x coordinates, right? Yeah. Let's check if this is working correctly. Again. Yeah. And we don't have NumPy. We need to import it. Or yeah, let's import the NumPy. NumPy as MP. Great. And I think now it should be working correctly. And let's copy this and let's do also for the Y coordinate. So, oops. So Y range, Y range, and so on. Here we're gonna have zero and Y. Okay. Uh, let's give it a try. I'm going to use just a few points. I don't need to use them all for the moment. Yes. And let's check the values of X. Yes, they are converted. And uh, if you don't understand this, well, actually, let's make a simple experiment. If the X coordinate, so the pixel, is zero, then we are at the bottom left corner of the graph, and this is equal to minus 32, which, which is actually the item zero of the x range. And same thing is for the y coordinate. If the y coordinate is zero, then we should have minus two. And that's true, right? Because if this is zero, it multiplies all these numbers is zero, and here we have minus two. Very good. So we can move on now. And we could have a function that uh, runs all of these lines of code. And it will capture the values uh, from the image only if uh, the file doesn't exist. If the file already exists, we don't need to recapture them, right? And uh, it will skip uh, all this part uh, where we uh, click with the mouse on the on the image, and it will just convert the pixels into the uh, values that we are looking for. So let's do that. Mm, we can create uh, the function up here, for example, and we're gonna call it uh, def sample oops, sample experimental data. And it's going to take as an input what? I would say a file name, then the image, then the x range, the y range, and what else do we need? I would say, yeah, that's enough. Now, most of the code for this function is already here, so let's then it. Okay. And uh, 
in any case, uh, we would like to have the image open, right? Mm. And then we can this. We can check if the file it, it exists. If it, the file exists, so OS path dot is file to check if the file exists. And here we're gonna have OS dot path dot join. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have what uh, the relative path to data and the file name. Okay. And uh, what else? I think uh, we're good. So let's if let's check if the file exists. Then what? Then we can um, we can read the file, okay, and extract the data. So that should be quite easy. We can open the file in the read mode. So os dot path dot join. Here again, the relative path to where I store the data, and here the file name, mm -hmm. and uh, it's gonna be again, as I just said, read mode. Okay. Then we can have uh, another variable where we're gonna store the content of the file. So content, con content is equal to f dot read and uh, we need to notice that content is a string okay so now we want to iterate uh, through each row of uh, the content so in order to do that we need to do for row in content and since uh, this is a string we need to split it every time we have a new line oops like this Okay, and uh, uh, we need to remove the very last line because uh, it will not contain any, uh, it will be empty line, so we need to remove it. So here is how you skip the last line. Nice, and uh, finally we would like to store the x, y coordinate, mm -hmm. uh, like so, so append, uh, an integer mm -hmm, which is given by row and we need to split it at the comma that we defined uh, down here this comma so split comma and the X is the first value right of the list and same for the Y okay so here Y and here's gonna be the second value. Very good. Once we are done storing all the items, we can close uh, the file, right? And uh, yeah, here it's path. So let's save it. If the file doesn't exist, then else, what we're gonna have is this. So uh, save or uh, sample hmm, experimental data and that's where we're going to open the image and save the quantities as we did before so like so and uh, the only difference here is the file name okay file name which doesn't which needs to be defined and it's an input of the function. Finally, uh, we can do what we don't need this because it's an input, and we can return hmm, return the x and the y. Mm -hmm. So the experimental data. And I think at this point we're good. The function is here, and uh, let's uh, uh, test it. In the case when the the file doesn't exist and when the file it exists. Okay, so let's remove it from here. Okay. Ooh, uh, okay, it doesn't work at the moment, but. Let's rename it in a different way, CL. Um, 
4418 new txt okay so this file doesn't exist then uh, the image name is this one mm -hmm. so we need to modify here and have image and copy paste the image name here okay and also we need to be careful here this line of code needs to be just inside of this else statement okay all right and finally we need the ranges the x range which goes from minus 32 to plus 32 and the y range uh, goes from minus 2 to 3.6 okay so we can run the function and let's see if it works now um, yeah in this case uh, the, the file already exists right so let's uh, modify it a bit and let's rename it I don't know underscore here yeah if it doesn't exist uh, then we can select the, the points of the function right like so and uh, we can see also that a new file has been created into data right yeah right here and these are the points that we just sampled so it looks like the function is working correctly so successful so far what we would like to do now could be to display the, the experimental data right so the x and y need to be renamed we can say the x is actually alpha experimental and the y becomes uh, cl experimental data okay and now we can define uh, import matplotlib so let me get it from my previous lessons here okay so let's import matplotlib and we have plt figure and here fig size oops equals to 12 9 then we're gonna have plt plot alpha experimental versus cl experimental then we're gonna have everything in blue and we're gonna label it as cl lift coefficient and then we're gonna do plot gca dot legend okay to call to show the legend then we're going to have plot um, x label label and here we can write alpha oops alpha space and here degrees okay and plot y label and it's uh, cl no units because it's just a number and the title plot title which is cl uh, over alpha and alpha is given by u03 uh, capital b1 oops here capital b1 and it's naka mm, experimental and here we have format what Naka series, right? Mm -hmm. Or in this case would be Naka forty four eighteen eighteen, yeah, as a string. And last row is plot show show. Mm -hmm. There is a mistake in the title. Let's see why. Yeah, this one. 
example, we have our experimental data. So mission almost accomplished. Uh, what we are left to do is to compare the calculated data with the experimental one. But this is very easy task as we just need to call, uh, again, these lines of code and an extra one from the previous lesson. And then we are basically done. So let's do that. So let's start by copying all these lines here, right? And then we're gonna have to modify a bit um, this row, okay? So we're gonna change the color into red and then we need the following lines of code where we call the NACA object we defined in the previous lesson where the uh, Reynolds number is 600,000, okay? Because we need to compare with the experimental data for the configuration at 600,000. Uh, and then we also can use the, um, the invisit case where there was no viscosity. All right. Finally, we can change the title like so. And uh, let's run the code, okay? We have some mistake, uh, let's check why. Oh yeah, the mistake is right here, is that the degrees go from minus 20 to plus 20 in my, in my case. And let's test it now, yes, yes, good. So we can see that uh, uh, low angles of attack the three curves are more or less similar. They have the same slope. And this is because the viscose effects are not uh, yet uh, present. But as we approach the stall and the separation of the, of the flow from the uh, surface of the airfoil, yeah, we can see how the experimental data and the one calculated by X-foil more or less follow the same shape, but there is some great uh, difference with the invisit K, which is actually just an approximation which works well uh, when we have low angles of attack. Okay, guys, uh, this is it for this video series. I hope uh, you enjoyed it and learned something. If you have uh, any questions, please uh, write it down in the comment section below and I will try to reply and help you out. And uh, always uh, you can download uh, all these codes from GitHub and do whatever you want with it. And um, I hope to see you in the next uh, video tutorial series that I will create. And if you like it, leave a thumbs up and subscribe. Bye and thanks again.